Gio, where are you today? I'm trying to mess with it right now. Uh, I am in, this has become my, my favorite workspace, by the way. Really? Don't tell don't tell clients, but Rome in the colony is so cool. Uh, Wait, I sent you. the colony in? In North Dallas. So I'm in Dallas, right? Sorry. I am. I'm home. I, so. I knew that Rome had a North. Is that new? Mm -hmm. They opened up. Uh, I record, I've recorded a couple ones from here. Um, I recorded the work hub I recorded from here and the one with Megan I recorded from here. Okay. So super cool. It's an area called Grandscape. And so Grandscape is actually a development uh, owned by Warren Buffett's company. So they came through and they essentially bought thousands of acres out, up here. And so they start off with a, with their their anchor was Nebraska Furniture with this. Have you heard of Nebraska Furniture? No. It is like a furniture slash um, electronic store. It's like, I mean, it's it's crazy. It's on steroids. I mean, I'll send you pictures or I'll send you an article. I mean, it's five hundred thousand square feet or something absolutely nuts i mean the parking garage alone is crazy and so then they that's what was the anchor and then they've got a big sports tour called shields they've got an andretti's which is an indoor uh race kind of oh mm -hmm. okay place place called the puttery which is like a butt butt for adults um with a really cool bar they've got an incredible uh amphitheater they've got a ton of restaurants and amenities there's a um so fun uh, we don't have anything like that here i'm sure it's the price of real estate but yeah that's a good time I mean, you know, and so it's it's so neat. But either way, you know, Atlanta, Rome is based out of Atlanta. That's yep. their first outside of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And it's just traditionally they were an event and conference business that slowly has ramped up to be kind of 50-50 event conference to office. And so their deployment is absolutely incredible, right? Their layouts yep. really, really good. Their staff is awesome. So same thing. They kind of, you know, we were just talking about co-working in churches. So they pull their staff. Um, a couple of actually one of the guys was actually on staff at a church. He went through the internship. And so super hospitality driven. I want to say they've got four or five people on staff and they staff it so heavily because just like convene. Per right? location, when got these you mean. Yeah. yeah. Okay. How many square feet? 30,000. Give or yeah. take. Okay. So yeah, that's um, a little little heavier than one would. Yeah. Again, when you're running conferences, right? Yeah, when you're you running have meetings. Yeah. Yep. coming in. They've yep. got, you know, they're having to do turnover, stuff like that. So, yeah. My touch. So yeah, but they're always nice as can be. And it, it's funny. I walk in, they they always hug me and they're like, oh, I'm so glad to have you here. And and part of, I mean, I want to say the first time I walked in, uh, one of the, the managing director introduced me, what, one of the, uh, what do you call me? So I always say that you're one of the faces of the industry. Um, what do you say? He was basically like, Giovanni's always, he's got a podcast and he's always on the internet and he's an influencer in the industry. <laughs> I'm like, well, I think that's the always first on time the internet. <laughs> I think it's the first time everyone, anyone's all make, ever called me an influencer. I guess hopefully I'm influencing good. Uh, <laughs> That's hilarious. And, uh, That's hilarious. But yeah, but they're awesome. So it's always fun to come up here. And then there's a bunch of stuff to do. So it's good. Which do they have a um, coffee shop? Uh, yeah. So they have, it's interesting because the entrance on the first floor. So the first floor they have the uh receptionist and they kind of have a little barista area but then when you come up top they also have uh, another kind of landing with uh more soft drinks and mm -hmm. coffee little, little snack station yeah so it's so they do they do a great job and we're still trying to get the one of the two founders on so the two founders yeah. are Preston day from days in and david sailors which is a former chick-fil-a executive Right. And so super hospitality driven pedigree. And so 
excited to try to keep them, get them on. So maybe this uh, will entice them. We'll send them a copy of this and maybe entice them to be like, uh, can we get them on? But you, uh, you actually had Morgan, their marketing uh, gal on a panel at GWA here in Frisco. I did. That's right. She's fabulous. Yep. Yeah, she shared yeah. a lot of insight behind there. I mean, I think Atlanta has been a great market for them. I suspect so will Dallas. It, you know, I don't know if you want to call it luck. They just seem to have a really good product market fit. I never think it's luck because, you know, you mentioned, oh, they hug me when I come in. You can still go to a lot of spaces that maybe are look nice, but do not uh, have the actual hospitality and service feel. Uh, that makes you feel like you're really a part of something when you walk in. So execution is still everything. And it's, I think it's, it's, it's uh, still not that easy to do it really well. So good for them. Yeah. You can't, you can't, you can't force community transparency, yeah. genuine. You can't force those things. You either have them or you That's don't. And those are, yeah, those aren't things you can teach people. They either have them or they don't. Right. Yeah. Um you can give them skills that allow for them to hone those and be better at them, but it's, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough thing to, to build. Right. And so you have to hire the right people. Yep. Totally. Uh, okay. So geo what's news. What's All going kinds on? of what's going so, on in the world of Giovanni. So I officially have gone back out on my own. So that was, that was in the works for a bit, just trying to figure out kind of timing and, um, I mean the why, right? What's the, what's the why, right? It is I thought it was funny. I was just having this conversation with one of the young guys here. As I said, you know, sometimes you got to step back and uh, surrender, right? And surrender is hard when you're a control freak, right? And you get yeah. that. And so sometimes it's stopping and working through why am I doing this? Is it because uh, it's something that I need or I want? Is it something that's driving me towards? Um, towards something that is bigger than what I've got now. Right. And so sometimes you have to walk away from some things in order to open up other opportunities. And so that's what I'm super excited about. I mean, it's no surprise to anyone. I had my own company before and I was able to, uh, to join a Y and I was given a great opportunity to be on a, on a big platform and try to, to, to grow a flex brand. And, you know, we had a, a great run and, you know, no one was expecting COVID when I joined or a financial crisis or any of that stuff. And so it's, it's been an awesome three years plus almost three and a half because I was able to really gain um, a lot more um, experience in the industry and overcoming what we've overcome. Right. I mean, in the, in the three and a half years, right. We went through the pandemic we started this uh, this amazing podcast that you and I had a little over a year on, was able to build real relationships, right? Helping people through things. I mean, I think that's what people discount about uh, what we've been through the last few years is it really separated uh, the, the people that were really passionate in, in the business because they wanted to serve and be part of something bigger. And those that were just kind of doing it to make money, right? If you were doing it just to make money, it's been a really, really it's too much work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, it go and, and most of them haven't survived, right? They're either, they've either closed, sold, um, are in the process of trying to, to, to sell. Um, and so I, I think, you know, what is it when the, the tide rolls out, you see what, what's really there, right? Um, and so I think that's what's been really fun about this past three years is is really just growing in the industry and as a person as a whole for me, right? Is, you know, continuing to grow my brand, continuing to get involved, right? I mean, I already had a decent relationship with, with Liz and you when you were running GWA. And it's just, we've taken it to a whole new level over the last few years, right? I mean, I've got a great relationship with Liz and Stormy as they kind of are working on their conferences and what's, what, what are they trying to achieve? And we kind of bounce ideas off each other. Um, I was blessed and honored to be part of the board last year at GWA. And then this year and next year I'm co-president with Sid. And so it's been, it's been really, really um, awesome to step back and really look over the last three years and see how far I've come, how far the industry has come, how far my relationships have come. 
And so really excited to to see what the future holds. Um, you know, there's a couple things kind of in the works that uh that are that are out there uh that maybe we'll get a chance to um to kind of divulge over the next few months, but but certainly want to take time now to really bask in how great the last three years were and then just kind of make the the slow transition, but it's not going to change anything, right? Is continue servicing uh, my clients uh, the way I have been, uh, even pre-AY, and then also the ability to just continue growing uh, the offering, right? I think that's where our relationship has really grown is, is being able to not only service the real estate with a little bit of understanding of the operations, but you bring a whole new dynamic to it with your deep, deep um, experience and operations background and just your ability to train people. And so that, that's that's been really exciting to to come alongside someone like yourself that has that background. Yeah, it's such an interesting, I mean, you've had a, an, an interesting uh, sort of period of time in the industry. I mean, I think back to, you know, when you showed up at the first Juicy and the perception of who you were at the time and now the perception of, of who you are. You could be like a branding case study, you know, in, in business school, like like an individual brand. It's really fun. And you found sort of your voice and, you know, the, the way that you want to, um, you know, show up in the world and you haven't lost your why. I, I, I would say for me around getting to know you is where you were like the Regis guy who had you know, there was no context or no sort of personal, you know, anything around that. And now I think anybody who knows you just knows like how much you care and how committed you are to just finding, you know, the right solutions for people. And you care about the humans a lot. Um, So, uh, you know, I think that that makes a really special brand no no matter what platform you're on. So I, I love that that has really, you've been able to bring that forward and help people get to know you. Yeah. And I think that's the really cool part. Thanks for those great words. I mean, super encouraging that people get to see that. I mean, that was part of, you know, we had Wesley on a few weeks ago and I told you that was one of the things that, you know, she went out of her way to come, you know, thank me and introduce herself and even encourage me uh, based off of what I had shared in at, at Juicy. But I mean, I think going back to it is, is for me, it was, I went from, I've got this, I already going into Regis, I had this great background in commercial real estate and retail and strategy and all that kind of stuff from a real estate uh, growth perspective. But I mean, really for four and a half years at, at Regis, I regurgitated slowly understanding the industry and what would work and, and what dynamics uh, were occurring within Regis, right? Uh, but then to step outside of that and then step into a whole new world of uh, the flex industry outside of Regis, right? Getting to understand different brands and different products and, you know, even getting to know myself to the point where, you know, uh, I was in my early 30s when I started at Regis, right? And so mm-hmm. I've even grown <laughs> 12 years into who I am, right? No longer was it about, you know, supporting someone else's platform, I can do that. But at the same time, I have to have my own brand, my own value system, my own beliefs. Um, and I'm not just regurgitating, you know, because at Regis, it was easy because it was like, oh yeah, go to any Regis and this is what you're going to get. Now I can go, you know, you can go to the Regis, look at this, what you're going to get. You can go across the street and see what Rome or uh, Industrious or WeWork or Fuse or Caddo, what they're doing, right? And you can dif- start differentiating, right? That's how you become a subject matter expert. And that's luckily what you and I have been able to, to build as a brand where we are seen as that because we really are that, right? We've seen and experienced enough that we we can do those things, right? Um, as opposed to, I think there's a lot of people out there, which is what's got us in trouble with we work and Industrious and some of these other ones that were just doing deals because they thought it was the future because of, you know, back to the what's the why. When, you know, yeah. why do we do what we do? Um, and so it's been really to use the word sweet is, is, is probably a good word to, to just, um, look back over the last five years, certainly, and see the relationships that, that we've been able to build in the industry, because we've all overcome a lot together, right? A lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, a lot of, uh, just 
passionate wins, right? Where it's like, okay, yeah, we survived this, or, you know, we were, we found a way to overcome in some way, shape or form different things that have been thrown our way. And I think that's where people really realize um, who you are is when you show up constantly and you show up without an expectation. Right. And I think that's what I love about the people in our industry. Yep. I know it's a great industry. There are probably places we could go to, to uh, make more money, especially today, given the state of (laughs) the office industry, (laughs) but people just love it and love the people. And, you know, we see that when we all, all get together. Um, Yeah. What do you, so, you know, tell me a little bit about, um, yeah. What are you, what are you working on that you're most excited about? Yeah. I mean, I think sitting down with people and helping them food, you know, we, you just, you asked me at the top of the, the, this conversation and I posted, I mean, what's your why, right? Is, is sitting down with people and really doing a whiteboard session, understanding what are you trying to do and why are you trying to do it? Right. And so that's what I love is really sitting down with people that are, have an existing business and don't really have a direction, right? There's, you'd be surprised how many people we work with or actually you probably wouldn't be, others would be surprised how many people we sit down with that you ask them why they do what they do and they really can't give you a straight answer, right? And so that's what I love is being able to sit down with people and and, and start that and then figure out a strategy around it, right? What are we trying to achieve and, um, you know, how do we how do we go about that, right? And so to me, that that's a huge part of, of what I love doing, what, I get to do on a daily basis. Every day is different. Every conversation is different. And I think that's what I love about having my own platform is that sometimes when you're at a bigger firm, um, you're, you, you, you kind of get guardrails put on you. Right. And I'm not saying that occurred where I was at, but at the same time, some of those are perceived and some of those are real and, and other things. And so, especially in economic times, like we're in right now, you know, things get a little more difficult because money's tighter and, yeah. you know, You've got to be more careful on what's out there, um, but also people have to pick, you know, what uh, platform they want to push forward and what that looks like. And so, you know, for me, it's uh, it's funny when I when I posted my LinkedIn, uh, basically, I guess transitioning uh, post. It was fun because I was able to sit on a flight and go, okay, so what do I want to say? And the really cool part about it was that you know, uh, AY really did take a chance on a Maverick, right? Is, I mean, <laughs> he totally I, did. <laughs> High five to them. Yeah, I'm not changing who I am and I'm passionate about who I am and what I get to do and everything else. And so I think that's the cool part is uh, not having or having my own platform allows me to continue pushing some of those um some of those boundaries, right. And in a positive way that allows for us to continue servicing people, right. Is, you know, I want to continue growing in my overall operation skill set. I'm not an operator. People ask me that all the time. Why don't you have your own space? Really? I'm not a detail. <laughs> yeah. I I'm not a detail person. That. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't sit behind one space. This right, where we you get can't to sit still for long enough. That makes no sense. <laughs> Even now he just walked away from the camera. Yeah, that's where the sensor. My battery was low, so I was plugging in. Uh, and so I think that's that's the the cool part is you know I can continue growing from a real estate perspective and seeing what works and what doesn't. Um, but really understanding new markets, right? I love traveling and doing what I get to do because I get to go. Okay, this is a new puzzle to figure out. Um, you know and why we, will this? And I've I've awesome. thrown some some new puzzles your way. Like we have the uh, ladies working on a space that, you know, they'd love to do childcare and they, you know, be more female focused. And then you've got one that's really passionate about bringing faith into the space, which is a theme we've been talking about. So a little less traditional. So Gio likes to push and, uh, you know, as I do on the model and make sure everybody, you know, knows what they're getting into. But yeah, that's part of what excites me too, is like no project, no people, no space is ever the same. Yeah. And again, I mean, your skill set is so significantly different than mine. 
right? There's some overlap, but our personalities, our skill sets. I mean, so you bringing in people that have come through your platform that we're looking, we're trying to help them figure out new, new ways to look at stuff. Uh, I mean, that that's, that's the exciting part for me, right? Is because I can go into a market and peel it back and negotiate and figure all that up. And I still enjoy that, but it's, you know, it's, it's easy for me, right? Is figuring out new personalities and strategies and dynamics buying companies and all that. That's the fun part. Right. And I think where, where's the biggest opportunity, right. Um, is what's going to happen as we work gives back space or continues to give back space as industrious continues to give back space as landlords realize, you know, there is a platform for flex that needs to be part of our portfolio, right? Those things are all going to continue increasing, right? As we're seeing, you know, the push to get people back in the office. But again, I think people get confused just because people go back in the office doesn't mean they're going back five days a week, right? A lot of these companies are saying, you need to be back in the office three days a week or every other week or whatever. The flex isn't going to change. And so it's going to be really interesting uh, fun and painful all at the same time to see how that evolves, right? Is what happens is uh, developers keep giving or owners keep giving buildings back or as yeah. owners buy from or investors buy buildings from banks and figure out how to reposition them. I mean, there's going to be a lot of really cool chess strategy being played over the next few years. And so to be able to go out and build a platform that allows for us to to help them is huge right i mean i think that that's going to be the fun part for me yeah i think we're in one of those times that can feel i read some of the headlines about you know banks the defaults and what are the banks going to do and what are the owners going to do it feels pretty scary but when times are scary is when there are opportunities and flex is certainly a solution. And so you've got these crazy market dynamics right now, like macroeconomic, and we are working on getting someone on the show to talk about some of the macro impacts, because we're not ignoring that. I mean, sometimes I feel like we're a little sunshine and rainbows because we get excited about sort of the micro things we're working on. But, you know, we're very aware that the macro office environment is still uh, is, is going to get pretty funky, uh, you know, for the next year or so. Um, and we know operators who are in buildings that, you know, are defaulting and some crazy stuff going on. So it's not all, you know, easy. Again, it's not the pandemic. It's different, um, but also a lot of opportunity. Yeah. I So it's sort of a, a mix in finding our way. And that's one of the reasons we do the podcast. We like to have conversations that help people get some insight into what's going on out there so they can, you know, make their own decision and get their own perspective aside from just, you know, what they read in biz now and, and some of the other publications. Yeah. And I, I mean, it's funny, it's cliche, but I mean, at the end of every storm, there's a rainbow, right? And so, <laughs> well, awesome. <laughs> not every, something but. awesome on the other side of this, right? And so, you, you can know, find the, a rainbow, you can find a rainbow at the end of every storm. Yeah, I think there always is one, but you got to find it, right? But you got to look, right? It's perspective right. because it is perspective. I, I was reading, I think I can't remember where it was. It was some like scientific explanation about why you see a rainbow. And you do, you have to be looking like you have to have the sun behind you, I think. And there are maybe the sun's in front of you and the storm's behind you. I don't know. It's very right perspective and direction. So, yeah. And yep. so this is an interesting one. And I'll say maybe maybe this gets edited out. Maybe not. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how much you want to put uh, the envelope. But um, as you know, I, I do a bunch of hunting and I do a bunch of of training. We live in a crazy world. But I've uh, I was out training with a couple Navy SEAL trainers a couple months ago. And back and there's a point to your what you're saying. And so as we, we were at an outdoor range, and as I was working the the course there was one direction so my right my uh pistol actually has an optic that is a magnifying right and as i worked in one direction there was two targets that gave me a rainbow in the optic because of the percept where the angle that the sun was hitting so i couldn't actually get the right target and i kept missing because the rainbow and- was like distorting your <laughs> typically you look at the optic and you see one dot 
Yeah. Right. And the way it was hitting, I had four dots and I'm going, which one's the right dot? And I'm, I'm, it's an obstacle course. So I'm running through this course and it's not, so I would have to reset, literally point the gun up and bring it back down and it would reset. And so it's so interesting because the trainer walked up and goes, what are you doing? Why do you keep missing those two targets? And I said, look, this is what's going on. And he didn't believe me. And then he pointed out and he was like, oh my gosh, I've never seen this. But it was just in that one position, those two targets, the way the sun was hitting. And it's so interesting because that's what happens is sometimes we get so caught up. We're like, no, that's not what's going on. And sometimes bringing in people that have a different perspective and see things differently. I mean, that's what advisors are for. That's what consultants are for. You know, that's why, you know, sometimes bringing in new set of eyes makes a big difference because you really step back. Um, I always love the example that um, that someone gave me of a water bottle. And he said, if you've got people on a person on each side of the water bottle, one person is like, I see, you know, I see sparkling water. And the other person says, no, it says the ingredients. And someone's <laughs> like, no, it says sparkling water. And then they're going back and forth. When you really stop, if, if you really look at it, they're both seeing different sides of the label, but they see it from different perspectives. And so I think that's the really cool part about what I get to do what we get to do is really go in and help people look at their business in a different way, look at their asset in a different way, look at their deals in a different way, right? As I mean, that's, it's a game, right? Is being able to sit down with my clients and go, okay, this is how you think we should negotiate. But if you thought about this, or if I was on the other side of the table, this is how I would respond. And so we're prepared to respond. It's it's a game, right? And yeah. so, moving pieces of the puzzle around to go what's the right order to put it in so that we can get to our outcome and sometimes it, it's right sometimes it's wrong and you just shift and change but i think that's what makes what we get to do on a daily basis so fun because it's never the same it's never the same okay this was a perfect transition because i wanted to ask you so you just made a decision to make a transition in your work life and I know that you have, you don't have to talk specifically about who they are, but you have advisors in your life that you use when you want to make these decisions. And I would love for you to just share a little, don't, you know, you can go as uncensored as you want, but yeah. I think we have a lot of entrepreneurs listening who probably try to, to do a lot on their own and make a lot of decisions on their own. And, you know, I even called you this morning. I, I texted Gio and I was like, Hey, I have a question you know, about this agreement I was signing and I just wanted somebody else's perspective. So you have, you know, you've kind of like a, your formal advisors and, you know, kitchen cabinet people that you talk to Yeah, just share a little bit about like making a big decision and getting, getting input. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I've always thought about having a board of advisors, right. And they're not, I, I literally have friends that have specific board of advisors when they say that, they meet, they sit down, they have a discussion about what's going on in life, personal, professionally, emotionally, spiritually, whatever. Um, some people call them community groups. Some call, people call them life groups. Some people just call them friends, right? And to me, it's it's a village, right? Is I've had, who you've got the pleasure of speaking to, uh, Reagan Dixon, who is 80, uh, or amazing. pushing it. I just want to be him when I'm 80. That's all I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> He, he run he ran all of Texas for Cushman Wakefield at one point, but he's been in the he's been in the real estate industry his entire career. And so Reagan's been advising me since I was 26. So that's uh 18 years. And so, and we've been through a lot of ups and downs. I mean, funny enough, I I mean I have never have a problem talking about my personal life, but Reagan actually married my ex-wife and I. And he had never married anyone. He said, uh, I've never done it and I'll only do it for you. And then after he was like, apparently I'm not good at it, so I'll never do it again. Um, but I mean, that just gives you an idea of how close our relationship is. But I really, you know, from the very beginning, you know, my conversation with Reagan has always been, I've hired you for the mistakes you've made so that you keep me from making the mistakes you've made or you've seen others make. Um, and so that's one that, I mean, I meet, meet with them every Tuesday over the phone at 9 AM. And I know that I can text him or call him at any point and he responds. Um, so not only is he an advisor, but he's a great friend, mentor, just an amazing man that I love dearly. Um, 
And then I've, I've been blessed by people inside the industry that, you know, Mike and John over at Fuse have become really good friends that not only are they clients, but they've, they're, they're partners, right? I've, they're the only business in my entire career that I've ever invested in that I do business with as clients. Um, and that's because they've got, you know, we're, we're equally yoked from a faith standpoint. They're, they're good men. I see how they interact with their, with their families. I mean, I go to Mike's uh, daughter's theater functions and, uh, you know, Harris and his son have, have grown to, 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 to finally break my way into his little inner circle. Right. Uh, and so he gives me the fist bump every time I see him. Um, and then people within the industry that see things that I don't get to see, right. I've had conversations with you and Liz and, um, you know, Kurt stormy, um, you know, people that I have a lot of respect that see a lot of things that I don't get to see that ultimately have relationships too that allow for me to see those things. Um, and then I'm just blessed with a lot of really good friends that I get to bounce stuff ideas off of. And sometimes it's funny is uh, I've been very lucky to have a lot of people in my life that come to me for advice or help. I don't know why, but that just always kind of happened. And sometimes helping other people through their stories or their struggles make you step back and go, oh, crap, uh, I should be talking to myself right now. And so it's it's interesting. But I mean, the biggest thing I would say is uh, as I've matured and grown wiser, um, I've realized that I don't have to make the decision quickly, right? I mean, in some cases you do, right? But in a lot of cases, it's a slow, methodical, why am I doing this and how do I get there, right? It is, you know, where I landed in the decision I've made here in the last couple of weeks was, it, it was a six month process that really started before I even agreed to, to join AY, right? Charlie and I talked through that. I'm like, what happens if it doesn't work out the way that we want it to? And so I had to negotiate, uh, buyouts or exits that allowed for me to walk away at the right time. And we won't get into details, but those involve, you know, things that I've got to, uh, to basically give back or to, um, to basically unravel to, to move on. But at least I put those triggers in. And then when we negotiate deals, we do that, right? Is what happens if it doesn't work out? What's the termination? And, you know, at what point do you have the guarantees in place uh, as you negotiate these deals? And so, because you're do literally doing light risk mitigation, right? And so a lot of those things, I have to work through those. And, you know, it's just having people that, that care about me, that speak into my life, that are wiser than I am, um, or have a different perspective is huge. But I mean, being a, a challenger eight, you know, this it, it's sometimes you got to step back and just be humble and just surrender, right? Knowing that I don't know the right answer. And I don't know how it's going to turn out because 18 years ago, when I started working with Reagan, I would be a basket case right now. <laughs> so I'd be like, what happens if deals don't come through? And what happens yeah. if, right this happens or that the, the market doesn't turn interest rates don't come down flex dies and at the end of the day you know as long as you're you're honoring your journey and you are respecting and honoring other people's there's always opportunity and i think that's that's the really really cool part and i mean this podcast is a great example of it right is it went from me reaching out being like, hey, could I use your platform to you being like, uh, would you consider a co-host? And I was like, sure. And then it was like, what the hell have we gotten ourselves into? She wants to send pre-questions and she wants to have an outline. And, and I'm like, I don't even know how to spell outline. And I don't I want to be a surprise as the next person when I say something. I know, but here we are, we're like 54 episodes or something like that. We just, we've done some live sessions. We just did, uh, yeah, we've had a lot of fun. Um, that yeah. webinar, which I'm super excited about, right? So yeah. we're going to launch a couple more of those. But I mean, 
being able to help people is, is what this podcast is about. I still remember you're like, so how do we want to monetize? And I'm like, I don't want to monetize it. I just want to get on and help people. And if we do that, it'll lead to opportunities. Um, and so I think that's where people even get shocked sometimes. They're like, so how much are you going to make on that deal? I'm like, I have no idea. They're like, well, you don't know. No, I negotiate the best deal I can. And then I'm like, okay, so now I got to do a commission invoice. What does that look like? And I think those are the best circumstances. And I'll tell you, because on the Regis team, we literally were incentivized based off of getting certain uh, kickers, right? If you negotiate certain things into the contract, and literally I knew guys that would sit there with the sheet and go, okay, if I get 90 days of free rent, I get uh, $500. If I get uh, a X amount of term I get. And it was like, you, you're not doing the best deal for people or yourself when you're doing those things. And so I think back to your question, that's where consultants and, you know, friends and directors and, you know, your village, whatever that looks like is so helpful because they can help you see things that you don't see from the seat you're sitting in. A hundred percent. Okay, Gio. Um, so What's the, uh, you're always on LinkedIn. If anybody wants to find you any place else, you would direct people to, uh, find you if they're looking for a little geo support. Yeah. So you can, like you said, LinkedIn, or, I mean, relaunched the website that, that I had before, um, which you can put in the link is from terrace, which is kind of a placeholder, uh, for, for now, like I said, we're working on some really exciting, fun stuff. And so for the next you know, season, that's kind of the the stopping point while we're ready to surprise y'all with the the next opportunity and the next launch. But um I mean it, it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy to find find me or us because we put so much stuff out there, but um we'll certainly put it in the link. We will. It looks good. You even got some testimonials up here. You got your new haircut up here. Okay. It's perfect. We'll put it in the link. Okay. Thank you for sharing. This is a good geo state of the union and uh, we'll see you next week. Absolutely.